elsewhere today, right slap bang in the middle of the former Prime Minister giving evidence to the uh, Privileges Committee. Guess what else has happened? Rishi Sunak has used that moment, big coincidence, to finally publish his long-awaited tax return. Peter Gagan joins me now, Editor-in-Chief and Chief Executive of Open Democracy and also author of Democracy for Sale. Peter, good to speak to you. Thank you for joining us on the show this afternoon. What does the tax return tell us and are there any surprises in there? Hi. Hi, Ben. Thanks for having me on. Well, one of the most interesting things people will see when they see this tax return is that I'm sure lots of listeners have filled in a tax return. This isn't a tax return that you would send, in, that you would send to the government. This is a bespoke tax return created by an accountancy firm on behalf of, of Rishi Sunak. So it's not the same as the actual tax return that you would send in. So it's not, it's, it, it is different. It's got different categories to it, etc. The headlines lots of people will talk about is he's paid over a million pounds in tax in three years, which is true. But if you dig down beneath it, you'll also see that actually because so much of Rishi Sunak's income comes from, from capital, from, from investments, he's effectively paid a marginal tax rate of about 22% on income of, you know, of, of two million pounds in the last year so just under two million so this is a, a very wealthy man who has a lot of money in investments a lot of money in in i think probably in stocks and shares and in other investments and because this is the political part but because capital gains tax is much lower on stock on on investments capital gains tax is much lower it's something that labor have been talking about for a long time someone like rishi sunak who has a lot of money actually doesn't pay a very high rate of tax so the amount of tax he's paid is a lot but the rate is a lot less than the likes of you and me who are on PAYE contracts. So the 22%, Peter, is that on his entire income? Because as you say, that is a significantly lower rate than a lot of people on average wages in this country will be paying. Yeah, that's his entire income because actually for someone like Rishi Sunak, the 150-odd thousand pounds you get as Prime Minister only represents a very small amount of his income. It represents about 10% of his income last year. So for him, he's got lots of income from other things. And that those other things because their capital, because their investments are taxed way lower. So he's made a gain on those. He's probably, you know, he's invested them smartly. The money's done well. And so what he's, what his tax returns are showing is he's paid tax on them. He's paid tax in the UK. He's had to pay some tax in the US as well and on US investments. So what this is showing is that he's paid a lot of tax. But he's paid a lot of tax because, frankly, he's made quite a lot of money because he's very wealthy. So if he's paid 432 grand in the last year in tax, and that's about 22%, we're talking about annual earnings of what, over £2 million? Yeah, so for the last uh, for the last tax year, he seemed to particularly large annual earnings. He reported a lot of gains last year. He reported £1.6 million in capital gains for 21-22, which was up from about 670000 for not two years earlier. So basically, his investments, a number of his investments did well, made lots of money and he would have had to realize those gains so he would have had to sell them so if he has shares you know i'm sure your listeners are aware it's not as if you pay taxes every time your share price goes up mm. you have to real you have to crystallize them you have to sell them so he would have sold stuff or or had been bought out of things and realized profits realized gains and it is quite striking this is somebody who's who from capital alone has made over about 3.5 million pounds in the last three years that's you know and that's What's, what that is in a way is what mm. economists would call unearned income. He hasn't gone out and actually had to earn that income. That's income that's generated from investments he yeah. has. And, you know, he's, and he's, he's obviously he's, he's a very wealthy uh, man, he's a very wealthy politician. But it does flag up, I think, politically in some ways, once the, the, the fulmination dies down about when exactly he's done this, doing it at the same time as Boris Johnson is giving evidence, the headline rate of his tax... But also behind it, there is a really interesting political point about just how low the marginal rate of tax someone mm. who's rich as Rishi Sunak actually pays in this country. Interesting, Peter. Thank you. Peter Gagan there, Edwin Shreve and Chief Executive of Open Democracy and author of Democracy for Sale. I completely agree. If anybody thinks it's a coincidence that Number 10 decided to publish that tax return, which bear in mind they've been promising for months, slap bang in the middle of Boris Johnson's Privileges Committee testimony, well, it was.